What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna look at saving files for our text editor with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at saving files, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we looked at creating new files, opening a file, and save as. So in this video, we wanna look at save, which is a little bit different than save as. So think about this, sort of the logic behind it. Whenever you have a new file and you wanna save it for the first time, you have to name it. And that's, that's usually when you use save as, right? So, if you've already saved it and for instance, opened it. So if we open like sample, now if we wanna save this again, we've already got the name sample.txt. We just wanna save it to sample.txt. So we have to create some sort of mechanism to let our program know if a file has already been opened, if it has, does it already have a name? Obviously it would. What is that name? Sort of keep track of it save it as that name, not as a different name. So we got all kinds of different things happening. So we don't necessarily want a box to pop up that allows us to pick the name since we already have a name. So with save, you're just saving the name you already have. So on the other hand, if you haven't created a name yet and you click save instead of save as, we wanna be able to sort of determine that and throw up the box that we normally would uh, anyway. So all kinds of different things going on in this in this video, and uh, that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So, all right, let's go ahead and close this. Head back over to our code. And first, let's head up to our open file. So remember when we open a file, we grab the file name right here, and we use that, and we do that using this ask open file name, uh, file dialog box, right? So once we've got that name, let's sort of set it aside in a global variable that we can access throughout the rest of our program whenever we need to know what the name of the file is that's been opened. So let's go ahead and go global and let's call this uh, open status name. And I don't know why open status name, it's we need, we need to find out the opened name and I don't know, the current status of the name, I don't know. Call it anything you want, but I'm gonna call it open status name. So then we can just go open underscore status underscore name equals text underscore file, which is just this guy right here, which is whatever the file is that has been opened, right? So if we click the button to open, but then canceled, we may not have a text file name. So let's go if text underscore file, and then do all of this inside of an if statement. Otherwise, don't do anything. So let's uh, check to see if there is a file name and then make file name global so we can access it later. Okay, so we've opened a file. It, maybe it's sample.txt. So this open status name will become sample.txt. You know, it won't become sample.txt, it'll become the whole directory structure. So it'll be C forward slash GUI forward slash sample.txt, right? It's that whole string of stuff. So, okay, now we've got this. Now it kind of makes sense to just create this outside of the function so that it exists just in everyday life. So let's come up here and let's just sort of paste this in. And instead of setting it to text file, let's just set this to false because, oops, because when the program first runs, we haven't opened anything. So we'll just set this to false so that just so that this thing exists and if we wanna use it later on, there's no conflicts or anything. So uh, let's just set a comment, say um, uh, set variable for open file name. I don't know, whatever. So this is probably not super important, but we'll put it there just in case we run into some errors. So, okay, we've got our open status variable. It's Maybe it has something in it, maybe it doesn't. So that works. So now let's head down to our file menu where we have all of our you know, new open save as, and let's create a new command here. So let's go command equals, and let's call this save underscore file. We call the other one save as file, so we'll call this one save file, keeping with the same convention of, you know, open file, new file, save file, whatever, underscore file, basically. So, okay, 
Now we need to create that function. So let's head up to our function section and let's create a new comment and say uh, save file. And let's define this function. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna grab this guy and we want to inside of here, also define this again as global because we may be changing it in this, in this situation. And if we do, we wanna make that change available outside of this function. So we'll just set this to open or we'll set this to global. So now let's determine whether or not there is an open status name yet, right? Does it exist? So, you know, have we already opened a file name? So let's go if, uh, let's see, we don't want global if, there you go, open status name. So that means if it's true, if there is something in there, if something has been assigned to it, then we need to save the file. And we wanna save it in the same way we did in our save as dialog box right here. So we can pretty much just grab all of this stuff and let's just paste this in. And we need to modify this, so let's go, we wanna save, we don't wanna save text file, we wanna save open status name. So we'll put that in here. We still want W because we wanna write this to a file, right? What do we wanna write? Text file, because we call this one text file. Text file dot write, my text dot get. We wanna get everything that's in our text widget, our text box from 1.0 to end, because remember, the top of our text box starts at 1.0, right? The next line is 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, all the way down to the end. So we're grabbing everything in the text box, and then we just want to write it to the file and then close our file. We always wanna close the file. It's always sort of best practices. So now we also, we also probably want to pop up a little message here, or at least down here in the status bar, give a little uh, sort of thing that says, hey, the file was saved or whatever. So let me just, Let's look around here and surely we have something we can copy. So, okay, we can copy this. And let's paste this in. But instead of name here, we want this to be open status name, right? Okay, so it'll say saved open status name. So, all right, that seems okay. Now we also need an else statement. So let's go else. So if open status name exists, that means a file has already been opened, right? Sample.txt. We wanna grab that variable and save the file. What if the file doesn't exist already, right? Well, we still probably wanna save it, but we don't have a name, so we want to save it as, just like we did up here. So we can go else, and we could probably copy all of this and just paste it in, or, oops, or maybe we'll just call this function, right? Let's just call this function. Okay, and if we call this function, then the same thing that will happen that happened in the last video when we wrote all this code, we'll get our text file from the ask save file name dialog box. If it exists, if we didn't hit cancel, then we will update our status bar and our the title of our app with the name, then we'll save it, and we'll close our file, and that'll be that. So. Okay, I think that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's run this guy to see if it worked. It's Monday morning, so it's entirely possible I messed something up there. What are the odds? So let's open something. And let's say it opens sample. And let's change this to sample four. All right, so now let's file save. And down here it says saved. And maybe we wanna pop up a text box or something that says this has been saved and then you can click okay. Uh, rather than just have it kind of flash down here. Maybe people might miss that or something, right? So, okay, so now it's sample text, but it says sample four here. So let's new, now let's open this again. And sure enough, it says sample four there. So that seems to have worked. So now we can hit file save as, if we wanna save it as a different name, but let's just do it like this to make sure this still works. Yes. And now file new. And let's file open and try this again. And that's gone. Okay, so now let's try file new. Make sure this works. This is a new sample five file, All right? So now let's go file save. Uh oh, it saved it as sample text. So that's a problem. Now if we open sample, uh oh, that got overwritten. So, all right, so that's a problem. So let's look at this. So. What we had done is we had previously opened that we had previously opened sample text 
And when we did, we obviously set this to the thing. Then we created a new file, yet this was still global and it was still knocking around as the original file. So what we do, what we want to do here in new file is really kind of set this to false whenever we create a new file because we don't want any old uh, sample text to be, you know, sort of banging around. So whenever we open a new file, let's pop this in and then we could just set this to false, right? So, okay, so that should do it because then later on when we go to save the file for the first time, it'll say, hey, does this exist? No, it doesn't exist because it's false and false means false, right? So, so okay, let's go ahead and run this, make sure that worked. So let's first, let's open uh, one of these other samples. Sample two, uh, sample three. Okay, so our first sample text is just truly gone. So let's open sample. This is a new sample. Let's change this to sample one file. And let's go file, save. All right, now let's go file new. Let's go file open. Save the, open this. Okay, sample one, that worked. So now let's go file new. And this is a new sample six file. Now we can go file save and it realizes, hey, that hasn't been saved yet. We can save it as anything we want. Let's call this sample six, I guess. And that seems to work. And we can then open something else. And new again, and then open other things. And okay, that seems to work. And like I said, when we click save, maybe we want a little pop-up box to appear. We've done lots of videos with pop-up boxes. It's super simple to implement that sort of thing. You would just do it in your code. Let's see, let's go back to the save. And whenever you closed your file here, just right here, line 79, you could uh, put status update or pop-up code. And then just right here, put your pop-up code. If you don't remember how to do pop-up boxes, I just go back in the playlist. The link should be in the comment section below and find a video on pop-up boxes. They're super, super simple. And you can just put that in there yourself. So, okay, we're coming right along and uh, looking good. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you get access to all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.